Okay, let me see. Let me get our recording going on uh, Facebook. And there we go. Hello, everybody. How are you? This is our Monday get together. It's what we call the pop up show. And that's it. It is absolutely the pop up show. And uh, let me start uh, letting people in here. Uh, here comes Edward Berger and Marjorie and Lynn and uh, Francine and and Deutsch, Jeff Stein, uh, let's see, Francine, Lynn, get him. Uh, let me get Paul Levin. And uh, here we go with Charlie, Wa wait a minute, uh, Charlie Wallace. Uh, we got to get him. There we go. Okay, everybody's here. Hi, how are you all? Good. 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 Yeah. And uh uh I wonder where uh I wonder where um um mm -hmm. person people from Atlanta. Well you're in Atlanta, right? I'm in Atlanta. Yeah, so you know all about the flooding down there that's going yes, on. Yes, I do. I saw that. You saw it? You haven't seen it personally? I mean, I saw it on the local video. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 But you don't see it outside your front door where you no. are? No. No. Oh, okay. No. Luckily, it didn't bother us. It was a beautiful day. Yeah. Oh, we you got... made the uh, national news. We've got, uh, of course, Andrew Deutsch, and we've got Lando Frisco, Jason... Uh, excuse me, John Ewing, uh, Francine Witt. We got Jeff Stein... We got Paul Levin, we got Charlie Wallace, and we got Charlene Solis so far. Boy, quite a few people here. Okay. Quite a few. Uh, anyway, uh, let me see here. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, keep going, okay? All right. Here we go. Uh, okay. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we're uh, all set to uh, do our little uh, gathering here. Uh, Mandy's not here, but uh, I don't know where she is, but uh, she's in Atlanta. Maybe she's all flooded out. I hope not. I hope not. The floods are still going strong, aren't they there? Or they lightened up. Hmm? I'm not sure. I, it seemed like they, they were... You are the typical tourists. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, as long as I'm not getting wet. Yeah, I'm happy. Exactly, that's a typical tour. As long as I'm not getting wet, I don't <laughs> care. If everybody in this goddamn city drowns. I don't care. I can't get to go around here much. I'm just yeah. uh, watching for my sister. And then, of course, we mm. have the ever popular Edward Berger. That's right. I... Say that again. I like to. Do oh, okay, that's right. <laughs> Now you don't know which one of us has said it. That's right. <laughs> well, anyway, so uh, what has been happening since we talked? Like, oh well, yeah. <laughs> a few things. Uh, huh? A few things a few happening. happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Andrew Deutsch. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. 34. Do that again so they can see it. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I hear I hear the Aryan Nation just got one new member at the cell block twelve. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's uh, it's interesting. He says he doesn't mind if he goes to jail, uh, and he doesn't mind if he. Oh, uh, he'll be a martyr. Absolutely. Right. Who well, wants I, to go to jail? He's, he's been wanting yeah. a teardrop tattoo for years. That'll get him elected. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. Here's yeah, the thing. he runs. He'll, he'll get reelected. Well, no, he he takes everything out of Hitler's playbook. You may remember he Hitler went to prison. Roman yeah. Kampf became very popular after he went to prison. You know, so there was a show on CNN about uh, maybe three or four months ago about Hitler and his rise to power, and one of his slogans was "Make Germany Great Again," which was yeah. very interesting. Well, and, it, uh, it was in, it was in German, however. I don't know if you know. I don't know if you know this, Len, but that Hitler guy—he wasn't a good guy. Oh, what? What? It's true. <clears throat> Let's put it this way: he had his faults. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Did I just walk into a conversation where somebody just said, "Well, Hitler, he had his faults"? 
<laughs> yes. yes, you did. <laughs> All right. But it's not like he was Canadian or anything. No, mm -hmm. gosh. He didn't have that noose around his neck. Thank goodness. By the way, Trump cannot go to Canada because Canada does not let convicted felons come in the country. He can't That's vote in his own, his own election. Really? He can't vote for himself if you're a felon. Yeah. Um, in New, in New York, you can. In, in some states. In New yeah, York. He's a resident of Florida. In New York, you can vote. In California, I think you can vote, if I'm not mistaken. And felons are not allowed in the in the West Wing either, I also heard. Oh, Believe it or not. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well. But doesn't he live in Florida? I think so. Well, yeah. he... He, he doesn't exactly. Uh, he, he declared his residency there, so he, was, he didn't have to pay uh, taxes. Is he allowed to live in Florida? Is he allowed to live at Mar-a-Lago? Oh, that was according to his that. deed. Oh, no, but he does. According hmm? to his actual deed, no, but he doesn't seem to give a crap what the law says. He can, he can't do. Well, they say down there that he can't be part of it. What's wrong with you, Marjorie? Breaking up. She's got some kind of problem. You know what I'm saying to me? Huh? She's not on the screen. Well, I got cut off a couple minutes ago and I re came in. You can't. Should I go out and come back? I think you have to hit OK that the meeting's being recorded. I think you have to let them yeah. know that that's OK and then it'll show you. Mm -hmm. or, just, or just jiggle the handle. There you go. There you go. Jiggle the handle. <laughs> What was it that was wrong with her? Because I never, I never, I usually have people, you know, Zoom. The videos being recorded. I don't zoom them. What? The meeting is being recorded. I think if you hit OK, it turns your yeah. camera off. Sometimes okay. that message gets, it disappears or you don't see it. Yeah. yeah. If you hit OK, then it'll turn on. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. so uh, that it, 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 we're not, we're not talking politics. We're talking Prison. law. I guess here. Yeah. Uh, Drama yeah. and tragedy. We're yeah. we're talking. Yeah. Okay. Be like, careful, Alex. Oh, she's well. My parents told me never to hang out with people like that. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen this? The movie that's on Amazon Prime, American Fiction. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Really good. Yeah. It's a very good movie. It is a good movie, yeah. First really good one I've seen in a long time. In fact, it was my choice to win the Academy Award, but unfortunately, I guess maybe it was too, oh. too black on white or something like that, you know. I don't know that it's so much black on white as every, everything recontemplating black. Well, it's all about an author who's black who can't get published. Because he doesn't do what people expect black yeah. writers to do. So he decides to write a book in that way of speaking, and it's a smash, right? And he hates every minute of it. Yeah. So someone has music on. What? What'd you say? Someone had music on. I, yeah, I, can't, I can't hear you. You're muffled. You, some you may need to reboot your device, Marjorie. A muffled? Yeah, yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay. Re reboot. It, when in doubt, reboot. Okay. So uh, any anybody doing anything interesting? Uh, I always like to ask Edward Berger because he never does anything interesting. Edward? Uh, yeah, now this weekend my niece wasn't here, so I didn't do anything interesting. So you don't even leave the house? No, well, I go out a little bit, you know. What do you mean you go out a little? Yeah, you know, here and there, but, no, you know, no, no place, you know, really important. Yeah. Well, you know, I went, uh, I went walking for a couple of days this week. And uh, it, it uh, I don't know, it doesn't get it. My walking doesn't get any better. So, you know, and Marjorie's always <clears throat> nudging me and going, well, if you'd walk more outdoors and I go out three days in a row. And she's still saying, if you go out more often and walk. Three days in a row. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't overdo I rest it. My case. I rest my case. You rest your case. <laughs> 
<laughs> I went to Disneyland. I don't see right. me. Wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, you you went to France. I went to Disneyland. Well, oh, you went to Disneyland. I went to yeah. Disneyland. Okay, I was trying to recognize the voice. It's yeah. me, Charlie. Well, that, was for, that was my Mother's Day present. What's uh, it like? What's it like there? I've never been. It, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I just can't keep up like I used to, though. I mean, he goes and he wants to go from like the open to close, and I'm like. Uh, I've had it now. I got to go yeah, home. I don't think uh, so. <laughs> who wanted? One who wanted to go from open to close? My son. Oh, okay, they open yeah, about like ten in the morning now, right? Eight. Eight. And close is what? Ten. Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> I'm no kidding. That was what I said. <laughs> I'm surprised. I, I, I'm surprised. I lasted about seven or eight hours, but. I couldn't walk for two days after I came home. Well, I'm surprised you're even alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, it was just a nice time spending with my my son. It was just the two of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so that, was, well, that was my Mother's Day gift. So. I keep telling Marjorie we should go down to uh, Disney that's... World here on the East Coast just for a couple of days that she would find it amazing. Yeah, you know, it's really amazing. Am I right, Charlie? Yeah, Epcot alone is worth it. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's it's a wonderful, uh, it's amazing that they built that thing. Okay, yeah. to begin with, it was a swamp, you know, which if uh, if the governor of uh, of, of uh, Florida has his way, it'll be a swamp again. Yeah. You know, see, if I were Disney, I would just say, "Screw you, we're leaving." <laughs> And go to like I don't know, Atlanta or someplace like that. Build it in a town that wants you. Will give you the tax advantages. You know, all of it. Yeah. Now, uh, Mike looks like he's almost falling asleep there. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Like... I'm deeply mesmerized and excited to be back here. Oh, okay. Well, we're excited mm -hmm. to have you. How have you been? Where have you been? I've been good, and uh, and and one of the. Uh, the, the parts of my life that I regret deeply the last few Mondays is not being able to be here. Uh, just busy, lots of plates spinning. Uh, my granddaughter has, has, has uh, been spending a lot more time at our house. And because of that, um, less, less windows for work and, and, and some of the fun things I like to do as well. So, so in uh, other words, her parents are pawning her off on her grandparents. Well, <laughs> it's a little more, it, we, we demand to have time with Alara and have some children born. He slept over at least one night a week since she was two weeks old. And uh, so we, we greedily and hungrily uh, desire this time. But they had a couple of setbacks in their in their household. And so we've been, uh, you know, trying a little bit harder to to be there as a support because, you know, she's she's the best thing in my life. So what do you mean by setback in there? Uh, well, among other things, uh, I'll give I'll give one of the surfacey ones. Uh, they had a they had a litter of puppies, and the puppies are incredible. They're American bullies. Uh, each one of them are going to go for I don't know five thousand dollars Canadian, which is about twenty oh. bucks US. Um, and uh, <laughs> so they're they slave had, traders, basically. Absolutely, and, yeah. and, and pure bet purebred slave traders. Uh, these are amazing dogs. Unfortunately, two of the puppies, which are about seven weeks old now passed away uh last week wow. and it, it was nothing that they did it was a, a congenital thing um and and many times with these dogs when such a large litter is born um you you, you do typically lose a couple or that does happen they thought they were out of the woods though because the puppies were so far along but it was obviously you know devastating to them and so that's one of the one of the issues they've oh, had so it was it was the death of two puppies or as your uh, uh, the people who own them call it uh, loss of ten thousand dollars. <laughs> well, that, that was probably three or four points down in the conversation, but within three or four points, yeah, that did come up for yeah. sure. So how many do they um, have left? Th th so there's seven left. Um, those two, thankfully, that had and she had four. that that mo mother had nine pups. That's, that's what I'm saying. Everybody was surprised by it when they went to the vet and got the ultrasound. Uh, they were very surprised that there were nine pups in there. And so, um, so, so yeah, it, uh, it was very, very sad for them. And, 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 and one of them was my son's favorite 
and the one that they were considering kind of keeping and and um yeah it was it's just it's been very 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 sad for them and then a few other things that have come up so um plus i've been busy too i'm 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 doing a whole bunch of things right now and so anyway i'm glad to be here today well we're glad to have you here today uh, how's that charlie I was, just, I was just a guest on a, on a on a podcast and i talked a lot about this show and uh this show means a lot to me and i just i appreciate you guys very very much oh really what did you say about us uh well he was interviewing me about the letterman podcast and and so the journey of shecky bringing me on here and 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 there was a moment on this show which is actually the moment that made me decide to start the letterman podcast and so i described that and i described your and uh and rick's friendship yeah well yeah oh boy yeah rick mm -hmm. i, I yeah. Uh, one twice a week i think of him intensely which uh is still so rough for me you know charlie how you doing down mm. there deep in the heart of i'm pretty good uh, you know, just keeping busy on fire yeah uh-huh and when, uh, it rains, when it's not raining when it's not raining okay that's a that's a beginning you know uh and and how are you do you do you care about the teams you you know, you, you coach umpiring for, or is well, that, no, I have no. You have no interest invested in interest in there, yeah. Individual players, or some players I like because they are nice people and you know, good players. So, if you were to teach me to be an umpire, hmm. coach me to be an umpire, because anybody can become an umpire, right? Yeah, you don't have you to be a great baseball. You don't have to be a great baseball player or anything like that, right? No. So what would I have, I have to know the game, Alex? What? You would have to know how it's played. You know, <laughs> you've got a problem. Yeah, something. Bring your bring, bring your bring your iPad in here. I, I think I can fix it. Marjorie, did she hear me? Is she now? She's locked up. Yeah. I think she's freezing up because I think she's logged on to the wrong uh, uh, thing. Oh. Uh, the wrong Wi-Fi. Marjorie, bring your iPad yeah. in here, and I'll fix it for you. I will. This is good. It's good. It's proof that you act two actually are in the same apartment, which has been suspect <laughs> quite. Been, been uh, suspect for a long time. Marjorie, can you hear me? Marjorie, bring me in I'm your on iPad. My way. Oh, I am on my way. I hear you. Just to get in the car. Whoops. Oh, well, wait a minute. Oh, God, I got to get rid of this. Get rid of the mic. Yeah. Hey, man, I want to get rid of that. Now I feel like there's some sort of dimensional shift. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Huh? Lead meeting. Lead meeting? Where? Where, 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 where? where, where, where? <laughs> There we completely go. Freak now, out when they when both I go in there and fix it. Problem. Let me go in here <laughs> and see here. Oh, I see you were using that. Okay, let's try. I'll switch to. Uh, okay, now I'm in New York. Mm, uh, <laughs> there we go. Pull this there. is what we call compelling podcast. No, yeah. <laughs> I'm riveted. Okay, so you can sign back okay, in. Okay, see in a few. You, you, it's funny because I just oh, spent the last I just spent the last um, hour with my grandson uh, um, um, with repair uh, uh, issues and um, you had repair issues. I had repair issues. It wasn't. It was um, Spectrum said turn in your modem and 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 install a better one. Okay, so then they they gave me a better one. And uh, it looked like a very complicated thing. And I wasn't about to pull out any plugs because if I pull out a plug, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, it's, just, it's like. Uh, but see, this is this is the problem with all of this is that there's a uh, there, there there is a problem with uh, uh, the fact that people of our age, as an example, uh, don't know all this stuff. I mean, if I were there, I could do it for you because I could look up the process and then go through it, and I would know what I was doing. But yeah, yeah see, I you know, like I can follow directions, but you have to keep. I have to keep in mind 
the names of things. It's like speaking another language, you know. So it's it's like you know, like what's a modem? What's an adapter? What's a what, you know? What what's a this? What's right. that? Well, my problem is is that I think that technology still doesn't take into consideration that there are people that know absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and start from that point. They all say, well, we'll send you the new modem. And then you just go online and read the instructions here. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. and the even, the, even the video, you know, like I, I looked at the video. It was just very intimidating. Anyway, my grandson is 17 and he grew up with all this stuff. He came in and went beep, beep, beep. And that was yeah. it. You <laughs> found a, find a 17-year-old kid and he'll fix it for you. There you yeah, go. Exactly. Yeah. But he won't tell you anything. A what? He won't teach you anything. I only oh, hire fixed. teenagers for my company so I can get right. get employees that already know everything. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, just ask them. but I mean, it it it's it's difficult for I think people maybe over the age of sixty to understand most of this stuff. Not yeah. only that, but it's 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 um, it's like it, it's like. It's it's a nerve wracking challenge, you know, because it's it's like I don't have yeah. control over over a, a lot of this. So How many it, could go over to Paula's house? <laughs> her having gotten not asking, <laughs> going to her house What's for dinner, and then <clears throat> install, you know, get a hold of her company and look at the instructions and install a new modem. How many here could do that? Yeah, I could do. do. No, not in Ohio though. Huh? But I'm you, not in Ohio, so I can't. You do could it. do it, right? I could do, yeah. I would bet you couldn't. It's, <laughs> it's not, you know. The thing is, it's not that difficult. Yeah. I watched him what he what he did. It's really, it's more like the intimidation of it. I, listen, I taught two, I, a, a whole year online, and was able to do that. But I was a nervous wreck the whole time because of the responsibility of 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 um, you know, what what do I do if something goes wrong? I'm totally helpless. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, it, I just don't like the fact that it, it it's a little intimidating for people of a certain age. Indeed and, it is. And it locks people out. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. And then they make this thing the prime form of communication between human beings, and you're locked out of it. You know. <clears throat> Here, 30 years ago, if your landline went out, would you know how to rewire it? Hmm. Shoot it? Landlines never went out. <laughs> That's a great thing. You know, the only thing that happened to landlines on phones was they would it would rain and they would get water in the lines and you would get crackling. Yeah. You remember that? But Fine. 30 years ago, could you set the time on your VCR? Good uh, <laughs> one. Good one. That was a problem for people. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did we have timers on VCRs back then? I yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. You set it. Oh, yeah. Very you wanted so. to record a program, you had to set it. Yeah. When, when you got your first car, could you could you gap the points? I never knew how to do anything in my car. <laughs> yeah, but, that's when I was a teenager. Does, does, does Mike even know what gapping points means? <laughs> gapping yeah, points for, means for me that's a sex thing. I have a little wait, wait, cleaning, uh, wait, those Canadians, so on. Randy, you're cleaning the points on your car on your uh, uh, what do you call it? on your spark <laughs> the, the, the distributor? The distributor. The distributor. Oh, really? Oh, well, see, that's how much I knew about cars. See, I mean, I didn't know anything about cars when I was growing up. And I knew kids who could take them apart and put them back together right. again. Yeah, I could do those. Well, the only one I could come close to that with is when I had a Volkswagen. Those things were so simple to fix, you know, that they were actual books on how to fix your Volkswagen. They had it for everything. The Chilton Manual. Yeah, in a car, you stopped at the auto parts store and you bought the book for the car. Yeah. That fixed no. car. Oh, really? For yeah. any car? Any car back in the Any car. car. Yeah, but you had Pinto, to I had the shop man. How many here ever had a Volkswagen? One of the bugs. Anybody? Did I you? did. Yeah. Am I right? I had a 64. Yeah. Am I right? They were easy for you to fix if you had to. Did, did, did you know how to change the blinker fluid in it when you needed it? <laughs> blinker fluid? <laughs> Oh, now you're just showing them off, guys. <laughs> no, there's no, uh, there's no such thing as blinker fluid, Paul. Now he's taking advantage. <laughs> of our, of our, he's taking advantage of our lack of knowledge. Did you, ever, did you ever get your muffler bearings fixed? <laughs> <laughs> you ever see? 
You see these videos where the dad sends a, yeah. a teenage daughter in to buy a blinker fluid, and she comes out and just goes, "Dad, really?" <laughs> Man, I've never done that. No, I, I'm sure you have. Oh boy, yeah. No, I I never was good with cars. That was that was not my thing. I could I could strip in the old days strip apart a computer and put it back together again or replace anything in a computer. That was something I was very good at. Where'd but, you learn that? Just out of necessity. On your own? Well, yeah, out of necessity. You know, uh, my feeling is if I'm going to use a piece of technology, I want to know how it works because I don't want it to have anything over me. Okay. So I learned, I mean, but ch changing things in computers in the old days was simple. You could literally strip a whole computer and put it back together again. And I can show you how to do it, Paula. It was that easy. It's still yeah, well, my, my attitude with a computer is I surrender. <laughs> it's, it's easier, it's easier <laughs> now than it was then. Well, now I, I got this new computer, which is an Apple uh, uh, studio. And what they do with these things is they're sealed shut. You can't get into them. I mean, you can get into them, but you have to know how to. And then once you get into them, if you want to replace the memory, you've got to pull everything out of this thing and get to the bottom of the uh, of the computer. Wow. Now, what's that all about? They used to have a little thing where they had two little screws uh, on the like uh, iMac, for instance, and you could put in new memory. Am I right about it? You're going, yeah, uh, sure. right. It was that easy. Yeah. I could have taught Marjorie how to do it. Uh, but they have... don't want you doing that anymore. So I had to buy this thing with the memory I wanted, you know, with the uh, uh, chips that I wanted and the power that I wanted. And it's all in there. Now, if I want to change it, I have to go down to the Apple store where they take it in and they, they'll replace it for me. They'll open it up and go to the bottom and put in the new memory. But, you know. Who wants to have to go through that? And then they charge you something like a thousand bucks for that. So today it's not that easy. Even well, that's true. That's true with cars too. I yeah, mean, I, I have a friend who uh, um, uh, she she's a real um, example for me because she's not afraid of fixing anything. She fixes plumbing in her house, you know, the, the whole thing. And she has a thing for Volvos uh, um, and uh, um She's told me that that these days it's it's not, it's not like the old days, you know, because the, everything is automated and and computerized and uh, r rather computerized, and so you can't I, fix it. I knew things were going the wrong direction years ago when I rented a car from Hertz, and I'm driving down in LA. I'm driving down uh, 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 one of the main drags there, and all of a sudden the car dies. It just dies. It just it's not like I could like push it and get it to start up and things like it. And it was dead. So I called Hertz and they pulled the thing back in and I said, what was wrong with the car? And they said, Oh, it's computer went out. Right. <laughs> what? Yep. The whole car stops when a computer goes out in my day. That never happened. You know, so, sometimes you would get stuck and you have to have somebody push you and then you'd pull out the clutch and you get the thing going again. But there, what? No, the computer is out, and that's why the why the car can't work. And now you get into these cars, and it's basically a computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, uh, Mr. Chisholm. There's a there's a book. Um, Robert Percy wrote a book called Zen and the Art of uh, Motorcycle Maintenance, and it's a oh it's yeah a sure fantastic book. And it talks about the two different types of personalities, and they use the uh, analogy of of two uh, motorcycle riders going on a big quest across a road trip, big road trip. And the two different personality types, the number one personality type is the, is, is the, the rider who just wants to get on the bike and ride and loves the experience of it, the romanticism of it. And then there's the second rider who equally loves motorcycles, but they want to know every little bit, how it works, yeah. and able to take it apart, mm -hmm. put it back together again. And it's the two different personality types mm -hmm. that are there. And I think we're, we're, we're hearing a little bit of this as well, because as technology enters into these vehicles these days, uh, folks like me, who is the former, just wants to jump in my Bronco and drive. And the more computers, the better, because there's more creature comforts and I don't care how it works. Whereas the second personality type, they get more and more upset at the complexity and, and, and the uh, inaccessibility of technology. And one other point, Paula, just to 
go off of your friend who had a, an affinity for, for, for Volvos, I can relate. Um, I had an affinity for, uh, for, for Swedish women, but I didn't want to tinker with them either. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. Olga okay. says thank you. <laughs> well, I, you know, in, in, uh, yes, Jeff, do you have something you want to say? Yeah, sure. I, uh, my first wife never drove a car b before we were married and nobody in the family had a car. So, you know, they lived in New York. They, yeah, you didn't have a car family. in New York. No. There was no car. I don't so know. Um, we got to Seattle and I bought this Volkswagen, brand new Volkswagen. Okay. I'm looking at it and I go, okay, this is the simplest car in the world. I got no problems on this thing. What do you so, mean? Was it a bug? Yeah, it was a bug. Yeah, okay. Right. And like, uh, I don't know, 54, 53. Yeah, right, right. Okay, so I, I said, uh, I'll teach you how to drive a car. She goes, great. I go, okay, the first thing you got to do is you got to know how to take out the tires and get the tools out to pull the tires out. And in the back of the car, there's another tire in case the one that we have is broken. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. And and here's the, and you put put it back in. Try that first. You got to know how to do that. That was the first way I taught her. To, and then I gone through the simple, fundamental stuff on how to drive a car. And See, now Jeff, this is at the point that my eyes glaze over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I know. Stop so playing with it. It got you <laughs> at, at the point of like, holy shit! There's stuff I got to think about. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, what I did for, you know, being in the radio business, um, I wanted to know how everything worked in a studio and I wanted to know how everything worked in a studio. So that, that studio would have nothing on me. Okay. So I learned everything that worked. I knew how microphones worked and I knew how the control board worked and I worked control board for years and how various things would work. And if they broke in the studio, I'd know immediately how to fix them or to go around them <clears throat> and so on. Because I felt that, that I did not want the technology to have control over my ability to do a program. So therefore, I learned everything I had to learn about it. And I could go into a studio. I mean, years later, I never had to know how to, how to run a studio because... I had the board ops and I had people who were operating everything for me. And yet I'd be able to go in and if there was a problem, I would say, Hey, I think it's that. And I think it's this. And I think it's that. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, the one person who was like that, believe it or not, was teller Penn and teller because teller was really the, the brains behind the act. He was the guy who made it technically work. And he would go out before a show. I'd be backstage with him and he'd stand up backstage and say, that light isn't right. And that light isn't right. And that <laughs> light isn't right. In other words, he had that same desire to be able to control all these things, which if they didn't control them, could make him look bad. Yep. So, you know, um, that's where my curiosity for electronics have come from. But things have changed so much. Just like I'm saying, I can't fix this Mac that I bought because I, <laughs> I don't want to try opening it up. You know, yeah, Alex, yeah. The, uh, the complexity and some usually unnecessary complexity that's going in. You know, I just rewired the whole house. I put in a new panel and there's yeah. a new back in the day, there were fuses. And then I went to breakers. Yeah. And now there's special breakers called arc faults that are required by code. So that if there's a, 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 a something happening in the electric that's different, it shuts off. And I'm getting these nuisance trips. So I called the manufacturer because they're, they're tripping for no reason. I know it's wired right. And the guy at the manufacturer said, well, we're going to send you a new one. Send that one back so that we can read the onboard chip and see what you did wrong. The actual <laughs> breakers in the panel wow. are spying on me yeah, yeah that, in my yeah. house. And I can't change them out because the code says I have to have them. So I can't just swap it for a regular breaker because if the house were ever to burn down, the insurance company will come back and say, oh, well, you... You, your breakers oh. weren't up to code. But the insurance company in a fire, if they can get a hold of those breakers, they can read the history on the breaker mm -hmm. and and then deny my claim. Wow. So, you yeah. know, even though I know what I'm doing, 
they, they've created these ultra sensitive devices with unnecessary and and that the the kind of thing that that type of a breaker prevents is so rare that it's completely unnecessary but the manufacturers like to sell you a 60 dollar instead of an eight dollar breaker yeah yeah who do we see about that yeah. <laughs> everybody in the value chain benefits except the homeowner so in other words your your breakers rat on you they do they're <laughs> they're 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 rats yeah. There's a chip you know, in there, and we want to look at it because it's been deciding whether you're an asshole or not, right? Yeah, and the answer was clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you were. It just won't tell me the answer, but I know it's clear. Yeah. Marjorie is, is completely unaware of anything having to do with technology. I she, used to until I met you, and then it just, okay. She considers it over. She considers, me, now. she considers me tech support. About every other morning I wake up and she goes, Alex, there's something wrong with the internet. You know, and then I've got to go fix it first thing in the morning. But, you know, why? I think what happens with people like like Paula, for instance, who, who claim she doesn't know how it works. I think most people go in with this attitude about I don't know. You know what I'm saying? In other words, I don't know how to run this. I, I I couldn't possibly run this. And it really is kind of very simple. I had this guy who was doing shows for us, uh, Jack Bishop. And I had the worst time with him learning how to run his show on the internet and to get the show out. And I finally, he was in radio, so I had to talk to him in terms of being broadcasting and that the you know where the signal was coming from is like the transmitter and what you've got on your computer is like the control room and once i did it that way he understood it and i think it's just that they don't they kind of the people who create these pieces of equipment to create mm -hmm. these technologies just don't figure anybody needs to go outside of their speak they have this whole way of speaking and talking and thinking about things and so on and they have no idea what the average person like paul is going to go through trying to install this thing and they also don't know how to write instructions i mean you know the master i think of writing instructions was julia child julia child taught me how to cook yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. her cookbook is is a work of genius that's she an taught, inspection manual yeah she yeah. taught me how to install a, a modem for my internet <laughs> she was very good at that, by the way. I, I always said, just look at a YouTube video. She said, look at the wires, imagine they're spaghetti. I got it. My first computer, Yeah, uh, I had to buy it from my own little company, which was right. me and like one other guy. And so I, we knew that IBM was a pain in the ass. Right from the beginning, because their attitude was, I want people who are billion dollar customers. I go, that's not for me. So I thought this this new company, Dell, or mm -hmm. uh, not Dell, uh, Apple, Apple was uh, whoops, sounded so pretty good. So I bought an Apple Two E. Did that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, it worked pretty damn good for about a year and they had a software in there that we could actually do designing products with mm -hmm. 3d 3d development all of a sudden they took the software off the product and said we don't solve that we don't allow that anymore oh really? bingo i had to go find somebody else yeah yeah mm -hmm. but you know the apple had already given me the good chance to know what a computer was and taking parts of that about, took them out to Texas, whatever, took them apart, put them back together. Well, Apple, them. Apple until about 10 years ago, up until 2010, uh, I had a, one of their uh, Mac Pros. You could take that thing apart, every part, every piece of that computer, you could open it up, pull yeah. stuff out and replace it, you know? That's what I have. 
And yeah. then the, the next time they may came out with a Mac Pro, that was the last thing you could do. Marjorie's using one now called a trash can. And uh, it was a beautiful looking machine. It didn't do as much as it should have, but nothing was replaceable in it. And uh, outside of, oh, memory could be replaced. In it. Yeah. Yeah. That was about it. You know, didn't you start, didn't you start off with an Amiga? Back Years ago, that was the best computer ever made for the time. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, the Amiga was a uh, the only oh, yeah. computer that was made that put out what, what, was, what was called an NTSC signal, which is a broadcast signal. And mm -hmm. so that, they could then create, like they did with uh, New Tech, a thing like the Video Toaster, which was a car that would switch video pictures, just like I'm doing right now. Of course, now... Yeah. These computers have so much memory that this can be done very simply uh, with uh, software programs. But in those days, it took a bit, bit of technology, and it was the computer that could handle it. They couldn't have made that for any other computer. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, they went out of business because the company didn't have good business practices. Yeah. They were phenomenal for music as well. Making music on computer, they were revolutionary for that as well. They were great for video. They were great for that. They were great for uh, for art. You know, uh, Apple pretty much overtook that area. But in the old days, Apple didn't do that. You know, uh, in fact, I remember the first Apple I got. You want to talk about a machine even I couldn't operate? The original Apple II was exactly that. You had to know code. What? Yeah. I don't know from code. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Code is something you get when you get uh, when you get the, when the weather changes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, so uh, anyway, so Marjorie, what? What's for dinner tonight? Watch this. Chinese. It just arrived. <laughs> she does. She used to. I I used to love her because she was right. Paul, great cook. She was a great cook. Marjorie, I stopped cooking. But Give it up. Paula? What? Can you hear me? I said Marjorie was a great cook, wasn't she? She is a great she is a great cook. No, she isn't a great cook any longer because she won't I cook. Cooking, Paula. She Pizza, won't. That's, that's what, what she are cooked. we having for dinner? Well, Instacart will be delivering it soon. Chinese. <laughs> it already arrived. And today it's Chinese. That's from uh, Uber. Ollie's, Ollie's noodle. Yeah, Uber. We'll be sending that Uber on. Eats. Yeah, what, whatever. Are you ever going to cook again? No. <laughs> <laughs> She's retired. You know, retired. can I get my money back? <laughs> I mean, I thought, you know, you were such a good cook, you know? Yeah. Nice the only thing is, it. the only trouble with Marjorie was she made too much of stuff. She would and make the problem with Alex was was that he wouldn't eat leftovers. Well, I don't mm. want leftovers. At, if it, maybe there's one day worth of leftovers, but you made soups and there were five days worth of leftovers. What's for tonight, dear? Pea soup. What's for dinner well, tomorrow night? Pea soup. What's for dinner Wednesday night? Pea soup. When I was single. I would make a soup or a stew, invite people over Saturday or Sunday, and then eat it during the week. It wasn't out of a can. It was fresh. Everything was good. And I lived on that. Yeah. And the next weekend, I would make another one. And so what happened? what happened? What happened? What happened? I retired. What do you mean? <laughs> Why did you retire? <laughs> got sick of cooking. You got sick of cooking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, lucky me. You know. Well, you learned to cook. It's your turn, Alex. Yeah. yeah. Well, I used to be a pretty good cook on my own. Well, I've got a kitchen full of utensils. But, but you wouldn't. <laughs> cook. But that, that was years ago, and you wouldn't let me do anything in the kitchen. Well, now I'm letting you. The kitchen. <laughs> your kitchen's yours. <laughs> yeah, I've got every pot and pan you need, every utensil you need, every machine you might need. And a closet full of cookbooks. And if you need, Alex, I can get you my recipe for ice. <laughs> okay, good. Good. I'll send you a Julia Child cookbook. I have them all. 
He doesn't need to sell a modem. Speaking yeah. of ice, I came up with a great idea once. Yeah. No, it was going to be a new company. How many times do you make ice? And of course, the ice comes out cloudy, right? Most people, most ice is cloudy. Yeah. It's not, it's if it's not cloudy on the outside, as you get into it, it gets cloudy. So I found out that the way you can prevent cloudy ice is by using distilled water. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. So what I was going to do was bottle the distilled water and call it clear ice. Perfect. And well, then you sell it and you say, oh, here, here, use this to make your ice. Clear ice will mm -hmm. make great ice, you know, and, and do that. And it went, all I have to do is go out and buy distilled water. Mm -hmm. yeah. We, we're we're marketing powdered water. We just don't know what to add. <laughs> oh. Guys, I hate to say this. Oh, I, I so pick up my granddaughter. I gotta go. Well, you gotta go. Okay. Yeah, I just I, I just asked, asked me to pick up my granddaughter. I love you guys. I miss you. Bye. I'm gonna try and get back on every Monday if oh, I want. Bye. Good seeing you. Good seeing you. Bye. 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 I wonder where Mandy is today. She was here last week, wasn't she? Swimming. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Swimming. Well, maybe she had to go to work. No, yeah. but it could be it could be she had some problems where she was living out there because they they had a major flood in the could be. No, I don't know where she was. Yeah, no, I mean it was enough that made the national news. Yeah. yeah. So but I, so I was a little worried about her and I just wanted to see if she was okay. Uh, whether she is or not, I don't know. Sometimes she'd leave a message. Uh, no, she hasn't left a message. Uh, Brian Neary says he's uh, busy making money uh, today. Uh, Mike Chisholm said you will be missed to him. And then Len Lafrisco says, please excuse Brian from Alex Bennett show. Signed, Brian's mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thank you, Len. Yeah, That's good. Very yeah. good. Yeah, so anyway. <laughs> So, um, um, what was it? there? Was one other thing I want to talk about. Now I can't remember. Uh, huh? Cooking and well, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, John. John. Uh, I just wanted to share today. I registered for traffic school at age seventy. Oh boy! I, I got a ticket uh, going down the Marin Civic Center Hill, going eighty-three, and I didn't know I did that. So I can't believe at this age I'm going to traffic school to keep the points off the insurance. But I just wanted to share that. Well, I, I had to do that. I had to do that. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, do they have like comedy traffic schools still and things like yeah. that? It, it's yeah. real easy to sign up. I don't know if they have that anymore, but it, I got on real quick. It was only 20 bucks. I thought I was going to get gouged. Well, they had Comedy Traffic Club, and everybody went, well, you should go to the Comedy Traffic Club. Yeah. You're, you do comedy in San Francisco, and you're the king of comedy, and blah, 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 blah. And you know what I signed up for? Gay Traffic School. <laughs> oh. <laughs> really? That's awesome. And That's the awesome. reason I did was because I thought it would be more fun then yeah. comedy traffic school. If I went to comedy traffic school, it would probably be some third rate comic who I wouldn't have on my show. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go to, to gay traffic school. It was such a hoot. I so enjoyed myself, <laughs> you know, and you get a third rate gay. Huh? You didn't get a third rate. <laughs> People gay. would say to me, uh, you're Alex Bennett, aren't you? And I went, <laughs> <laughs> I went, Yes. And they said, but you're not gay. And I said, so is it a requirement for gay traffic school that you be gay? I wanted to come someplace where I felt it would be the most fun. And I was absolutely right. I recommended gay traffic school to everybody I knew. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, are you gay, Alex? No, I was once. <laughs> <laughs> To not have to pay higher rates on my insurance. Uh, so, uh, did, did you go already? You went already, right? No, I'm I'm online now. There's seven court, you know, classes. Oh, they're doing it online now. Yeah, and they make it real easy. So, <clears throat> oh, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got what do they ask you to do the first time? Duty. 
they what they do is they charge you 20 bucks they give the information directly to the court in marin and um, i haven't started the first chapter there's seven chapters and i also put it uh audio assist for five bucks so they could talk to me <laughs> so, you know, i wouldn't fall asleep they charge you for audio assist <laughs> yeah they did uh, back, nice back in, back yeah. in the all day, I had, all I had to do at gay traffic school was blow somebody. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you used to get a break. You used to get a break on the fee when you took the traffic school. You used to get a break on the on the ticket um, yeah. amount. Now, not only do you pay the ticket amount, the full amount, you pay an additional twenty or forty dollars for have taken traffic uh, school, and then you right. pay for the traffic school. So wait a minute, I'm trying to remember, did I have to pay? I don't think so. I think it was just yeah. to go against my record. And so right. therefore my insurance company wouldn't charge me a higher rate. Yeah, and, now it's very different. Wow. Uh, how about in Texas? Well, have you ever gotten a ticket down there, Charlie? Well, luckily I have not had a ticket in over 20 years. So last time I got a ticket, it was like what Len said. Not, no, not, it was before when I got a break on how much I had to pay for the ticket, and then I got the, the, the deduction on my auto insurance. Yeah. And that was from like 2000 or whenever the last time. But you I didn't got. have a choice of like comedy traffic school or? Yeah, I did. I took comedy traffic school. Oh, really? It was great. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Did you laugh? I laughed a lot. So, and, and what happens then? They, then at the end, they give you a test, like they give everybody, right? Yeah. yeah. It's the same test you get whether you go to gay traffic school or whatever. But you've just spent how many hours? I think I spent two days, two eight-hour days. I think it I was think two, two Saturdays. Yeah, I had to go. Yeah, and I went with uh, somebody else in, on my crew at Live One Hundred Five. Uh, also got a ticket, so we both went at the same time. <laughs> And uh, we, it was it was quite enjoyable, quite enjoy. Except the fact that it took sixteen hours out of my life. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. how long does it take to do the online version? I think I'm I did it about yet because I haven't start started it. Has anybody else here? I think I did it in about four hours, probably. Yeah, I mean, wow. I blew through it. Yeah, what a deal! What do you mean, what a deal? Well, because we had to sit there for eight hours on two Saturdays. <laughs> right. yeah. And you can do it in the comfort of your home. I would have to do it in the comfort of my home. So I'd have to be in my home for like eight hours. Okay. <laughs> and then, you know, the downside is Marjorie's here. Uh, <laughs> oh You're going to pay for that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> when the show's over, and why did you say that? <laughs> No, actually, she's pretty good about it for the most for the most part. Oh, yeah. she, she doesn't mind me kidding her. No. When when I have to be in a webinar where I have to stay with the camera on through the whole piece, I just play a recording of myself watching it and do other things. <laughs> You're not. Yeah, you can actually do that. I do that. I, I know I can. I do it. I wasn't kidding. <laughs> I have a I have a recording of me in a different shirt. I have the shirt sitting in the office and I put it on at the beginning of the meeting and turn off my <laughs> microphone and play a recording of me watching a meeting from about, about six months ago. Well, I use a, a thing here called OBS, which is a switch, yeah. which I'm sure you're familiar That's with. That's what I'm using. Yeah. yeah. And then you just put it into virtual mode so mm -hmm. that you can come up in, uh, in zoom. Mm -hmm. You could run the recording in zoom. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm not actually here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an AI. I'm actually a 300 pound Samoan. I, I, I wondered why you were funnier than usual. <laughs> oh, it's, good. It's, the good, it's the good, clean Samoan living. <laughs> oh, man, I tell you. Yeah, I, I wonder how many college students have that figured out. You know, like more, it's, more than you know. No, no, I don't know. There's more than I know. I mean, they can just turn off their turn off their uh, cameras too. But uh, uh, my favorite thing to not, do in a I have to go is, to the trouble. <laughs> my favorite thing to do in a meeting is capture somebody else's image and have them sitting next to me. And well, how the hell did I get? There? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, anyway, so you know, um, otherwise, uh, nothing, nothing is new here uh, that to speak of. Uh, but um, was it? There was something we we did, and I can't remember now, Marjorie. Something new in our lives, and I. Oh yes, argued. We you are baby, for a walk. No, we are babysitting. Oh, yeah. Baby. Oh, the the, cat, the cat, cat's back. The, cat, the, cat, the cat's back. Cat's back. Yeah. Thursday. Well, we think she's back. She just never is around. She's just like she's a ghost. around us all the time. She's under the bed right now, Alex. What? She's under the bed. Yeah. Yeah. But sitting in your shoes. <laughs> huh? Yeah. <laughs> Probably shitting in your shoes. <laughs> Shoes. Usually, I've had cats throw up in my shoes. Yeah, oh. they they walk around going, "I got to throw up." Where can I go? Oh, there's the shoes. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll do them. Hmm. But anyway, she's here, and then she goes and she hides somewhere, and then we have to go find her because I woke up this morning. I thought the cat had left the apartment. I could not find her anywhere, and I finally found her, and she was here in this studio. Oh, hanging out behind a file cabinet. No, but that was early in the morning. She was in the closet in the guest room. Oh, really? That's where she spent the night. Hmm. Okay. All right. You have I'll... to keep all the closet doors open because she yeah. gets on shelves in there. Is she a sweet cat? I'm trying to think. She used to be. Well, I mean, is she sweet? She sometimes, after about. Like we we have her till Thursday and probably Wednesday night she'll suddenly come and sleep on the bed with us, you know, and get really close. And then the next day she has to go. Uh -huh. So, but I mean, doesn't she understand that part of her staying here is to act like our cat? <laughs> you know, uh, but she and she looked very depressed today. I don't know. If she, yeah, she's hiding. She seemed depressed. But anyway, uh, it's good to have the cat here, I guess. I, I don't know, because I haven't seen her much, but, you know. I've never seen a cat at your house. <laughs> oh, no. You, you always said you had a cat, but I don't. We see. don't have a cat. We've never had a cat. Well. We take care of a cat. Okay. Yeah. You know. Well, I never saw a cat in your house where it's owned. Don't know. I'll tell you, if you came over right now, Jeff, you wouldn't see the cat either, because as yeah. soon as anybody comes into the apartment, the cat hides. To hide. yeah. And they find places to hide. You can't. You, you got to find out where they. I, I oh, usually yeah. had it down pretty good, where they, where she hid. That's their specialty. But the last. I think, time, I think cats time, really like to hide. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they like cover. They want something over their head. High up. Yeah. Yeah. So they feel comfortable with that. So yeah. the hell, you know. Uh, but uh, that that's our big story. So we have a cat now. Mm. Again, again for till what Thursday? Yeah. And then they take the cat. It's a rent a cat. So. <laughs> yeah. um, you don't have any pets, do you, Paula? I uh, no, I don't. But uh, I had Siamese cats uh, for years, of... years. Yeah, one one at a time, and I loved Siamese cats. They're so much fun. Tell, tell Marjorie. What? <laughs> Look at Siamese. My mother had a Siamese cat. Tell Marjorie that I I had nothing with Siamese cats. I love Siamese cats. You know, they, they're a great cat. Great they people. are. Uh, uh, the, uh, did you have males or females? Females. Really? Because the females are a little more wildy, you know, the, uh, than uh, uh, a male. Well, they're 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 pretty interesting. I had I had one that climbed up on on a mantle, and um, I was I had a beautiful vase from Italy, and they went vase. Was, it's a vase. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh, excuse me, a vase. Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> in any case, the, what whichever it was, the, the cat just went. Whoosh, that was it. <laughs> oh, of course. Just just uh, that's what she wanted to do at that time. Oh, I've I've had cats where I could put something on a counter and it just wouldn't stay. They wouldn't stay there. <laughs> boom 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 boom. <laughs> What was it? Did we see something about a, a cat's birthday party or something? And it's a, a a birthday table with all these things on the side. Right at the edge of the table. <laughs> you could, you know, <laughs> I'm in stereo here. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thirsty? There we go. Water. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, he's at a diner. That's nice. Anyway. Hey, we're kind of running out of time here. Oh. You know? Uh, I always enjoy this. This is just a uh, delight, this gathering here. And uh, I uh, um, I thank you all for joining us again today. It's been another fun time. Mm -hmm. um, somebody was trying to get on here, and I wouldn't let them on because mm -hmm. I got a couple of complaints from some of the people here that this, this person was really disruptive to the proceedings. And what it was, it was Len LaFrisco that wrote me about it. <laughs> and, <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. And what I love about this group is you're so protective of yourself. You know, you love the group. You love talking to the group. You love the, all the people in the group. You don't want anybody on here that doesn't fit. And so I'm respectful of that, you know, which I'm probably going to get some emails now. Why didn't you let me on? <laughs> But Good job, Len. Well, no, you said it, Len, and Marjorie was bugging me about it, too. About what? About a certain person that was kind of annoying. Oh, yes. We won't say who, but, you but know. I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Number two. I Stop writing about me, Len. I didn't want to mention this while you were around, Andrew. Oh, like I was paying attention. Yeah. Hey, listen, I want to thank everybody for being here. First of all, I got to thank Andrew Deutsch because uh, there's nobody uh, nobody funnier than Andrew Deutsch, right? He uh, started us off with that great uh, Trump uh, visual, you know. There we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, thank you, Andrew. Thank you to Len Frisco. You know, if this guy, person writes me and says it's terrible, I'll, I'll refer him to you. Well, you do that. <laughs> you can. Uh, <laughs> yes, John. Oh, good to have you here. Always, always good to have somebody from Novato. Uh, and uh, Francine Witt, thank you so much. She's right here in New York City. Um, and uh, Paula. She's out there in Ohio, and we uh, love her dearly. She's coming to visit us soon, too. Uh, Jeff Stein, good seeing you. You and your wife should come down. We should eat again and hang out. Lovely, mm -hmm. lovely people. Uh, Charlie Wallace, good to see you once again. Of course, Charlene Solis, good to see you. And Marjorie, and, you know, can I say? She's my ball and chain. <laughs> Right. And finally, yep. what? Yep. <laughs> finally, we're going to sign off in the traditional way that we always sign off with our wonderful friend, Edward Berger, who says, That's all, folks. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you later. Yeah. Wave goodbye.